Hey, here I am again. And in these crazy Corona times, I had an idea. Um, if I have nothing else to do, then why should I not take uh, the opportunity to explain you something about wind impact on ship's maneuvering motion, but this time more using the theory. So it's a challenge, I know. But I do promise I don't need any equations, maybe one, or yeah, maybe one. <laughs> uh, and again, the, the, results, the results of the summon planning tool. Yeah, what I thought is uh, I will talk about three different things. Today I only go on to the first one. And the question is, I would like to find a characteristic diagram for the overall understanding of wind impact and the limits of steerability under wind. Another point is to explain the wind forces. Uh, what is the nature of the wind forces and how do they attack the ship? And the last part will be a nature of core stability under wind and how we can detect in what regions or areas a ship is stable or unstable under wind. So this is the idea. And as I mentioned, today I only go for the first part to find out a characteristic diagram. Now the question is, um, is there a, one diagram to understand and predict the wind impact and the limits of steerability in the same way as we, for instance, use the upright lever arm curves, the graphs, which are required to estimate the ship's cross stability for cross stability and rolling motion for loading conditions. So is there anything we could use also for wind? And the other part is, if we have such a diagram, can we estimate the required drift angle or rudder angle um, for the wind balance, maybe on straight track or for turning in maneuvering motion beforehand? So to predict what we would need for the future. And the question is, can we do that? Yes. Uh, and these are our objectives for the next slides to come. Um, this is uh, a, a review, so uh, because you have seen these diagrams and I, I demonstrated it in my previous lectures on wind impact on straight track and I had chosen two different ships types, one uh, with the center of the superstructure more to the aft and maybe with bow trim, this was always uh, in a windward turning tendency and the other one was this one uh, with the uh, center of the superstructure more to the bow and maybe even with aft trim so this was the tendencies and we have uh, uh, f demonstrated this kind of behavior uh, for different rudder angles so um, we had one wind directions from north as you can see here the wind speed was 30 knots and uh, the initial sp uh, ship speed was about six knots. And these graphs here, they were found for six different rudder angles, so we had different uh, tracks. And we would like to use these results to form a diagram. And this is the kind of diagram I I'm heading for. So on one axis, this is the encounter angle to the wind. So zero is headwind, 90 degree is beam wind, and 180 degree is stern wind, wind from the stern. And on this axis, we have uh, the rudder angle. So if the ship is windward turning, then we need rudder angle to the lee side. And if it's leeward turning, then we need, and this is the uh, lower part, we need the rudder angle uh, to the windward side. And 
I would like to explain uh, how this graph um, is to be formed from, the from these results. And uh, I will focus specifically on the four part because this is what is repre represented here. So this ship was windward turning always. And so for rudder angle zero degree, this would be here, uh, the ship would turn into the wind. That means for this wind condition, it's an encounter angle of zero degrees. That's we, why we are here. Then we um, set the rudder angle maybe to five degree. And then we saw, okay, now the ship is uh, going a little bit 40 degree, 45 degrees. This would be roughly here. And so we have the next point. And then for 10 degrees, we got the next one, uh, 20 degrees up to 30 degrees we used. So this part of the diagram is representing these uh, results. For different rudder angles, we got for different rudder angles, uh, we got different courses or better encounter angles to the wind. <clears throat> yeah, you might ask, what is with this part here? And there are two comments to make, remarks to make. First, we are talking for the time being, these investigations were made for constant wind speed. So if there's a little bit changed in the wind force or in the wind direction, then we would need to maybe a little bit corrective steering, then we have to take the average. And this is absolutely necessary in these regions because we will later, not today, find out this is an unstable uh, wind conditions. And uh, so we only can achieve this kind of graphs by corrective steering. So we always have to, to uh, compensate uh, if the ship starts turning in one or the other direction. So this is not the same way as here where it's very stable. You only have to put the rudder and the ship is doing a certain result. Okay, this was for the ship which, is, uh, which has the center of the superstructure more to the aft and maybe the other tendence, tendency is bow trim. Then you got these kind of graphs which always in all conditions is windward turning. Now the next what we have. This is for another ship where the center of the superstructure is more in the fore part, maybe even the stern trim. Stern trim. And here are the results for this ship. So um, when we put the rudder amidship, then we ended up here with zero degree of rudder. We had a, a, a certain, um, a certain uh, heading that means encounter angle to the wind. So it was not turning into the wind, it was turning out of the wind and then find its rate. And even more, if we increase the rudder, then the ship was going more uh, to increase the encounter angle. It was turning out of the wind and find a new track. Uh, these are uh, rudder angles um, to, to starboard in this case. If you would have find uh, rudder angles to the port side to turn into the wind, then we would get this part of the diagram. Um, and again, for these and these regions, uh, we would find that we have to need a corrective steering because these are unstable regions, what I explain later. Okay, now we have found two different graphs and there might be a sort of intermediate graph between these and, and these conditions. There might be also the, the tendency that uh, the slope of this graph is not uh, positive or negative, like here it's nearly zero and then it's partly going this way. So this is, so to say, the intermediate conditions between these two uh, graphs, two curves. Yeah, <clears throat> the next uh, point I was uh, heading for is what is about the speed ratio, the, in, the parameter of wind speed to ship speed? What is the, what is the um, effect of this? Um, 
This is, for instance, one uh, sample for our center of the superstructure 4, the, the second part of our curves. One sample curve, and if we uh, look onto the amplitudes of wind to ship speed ratio. This is for one ratio, wind speed to ship speed. Even it, uh, it's a parameter, even the, the uh, uh, power of two, so the exponent of two. And if you would increase uh, these wind to ship speed ratio, then you would need other amplitudes, higher rudder angles, both for this side and also for this side. Um, if the ratio is smaller, so the ship is going, the ship is going faster, or the wind is slow, uh, slower, uh, uh, then the rudder angle necessary for a certain course is smaller. What happens if this would be our maximum rudder angle? Sorry, maximum rudder angle. Uh, what is then with these areas, uh, if we have this high wind to sp ship speed ratio, uh, what happens in this region? So the existing rudder angle would not be enough. So this would mean this would not be able to act as a constant or steady course. In this encounter range of encounter angle, the ship would not find a straight track, or even worse, it could not even turn through this area which, which if we come from, from wind angles uh, and then we try to go uh, to stern wind, we would not cross this region. So this is a so-called um, range of loss of steerability. So we cannot turn the ship through this area if we come from this side, from these angles, maybe from the aft, then you are able, yeah, then you will be turned without any, <laughs> any help. You will, the ship will be turned. Okay. Um, this would also be possible for these ranges here. So if the wind, ship, wind to ship speed ratio is even higher, then we would also here find ranges which are which are uh, unable to uh, steer. So we should point out the wind to ship speed ratio is the most important operational parameter and this means slow ship speed has the same effect than high wind speed. So you have to keep it in mind that these both wind speed and ship speed they go together. Um, the question is, is it also true for maneuvering tracks? For the time being, we only were talking about straight course, so is it also for maneuvers? Can we try it out? Yes, we can. And I will show um, what happens here. So this is a sample with the fast time simulation tool, and we were using the ship wind to ship speed ratio uh, 3.1 on straight track with 10 degree to starboard, uh, then we get this track. So this ratio we can achieve by wind speed 3.2 knots, uh, uh, sorry, ship speed 3.2 knots and wind speed 10 knots. Uh, the same would happen if the ship speed is double, 3.2 knots uh, roughly, and the wind, the wind speed is increasing to 20 knots. And again, if the ship speed is uh, going higher to 12 knots and the wind speed is 40 knots, then we will have the same track. So if it's the same wind to ship speed ratio, we get the same result for the, for the straight track. And also for maneuvers. This, for instance, is a turning circle with, 33, uh, with 35 degrees to starboard for the same wind to ship speed ratio. Um, this is for uh, ship speed 3 knots about and wind speed 10 knots. If we increase the ship speed to 3.2 knots, so we see that the ship is uh, faster, it's already arriving here but it's for the wind speed 20 knots. So the ratio remains the same. That means also the track of the ship is the same. 
And the last part is ship speed 12 knots. That's why we are much more faster. And the wind speed is 40 knots to have the same ratio. And then we see at least for this part, we have the same track. So it is true. The wind to ship speed ratio is the dominating parameter to judge for wind effect. Okay, thank you for your attention.